Hi, I'm John and I'm that Astro Chap. It's been pretty bad weather recently, so I haven't actually been able to get the uh, the new camera and filter wheel out on this telescope and try and capture some more data. Um, so I'm hoping that as we head into summer, that will start to improve and we should maybe see a little bit less cloud. Yeah, obviously the flip side of that is with summertime, the, the nights are shorter. So in terms of astronomical darkness, there's probably only about like four or five hours where it's actually like pitch black where you can get the best quality data or thereabouts. So we'll see. Um, as and when I actually have some clear nights and I can make the most of that opportunity, then I will record another video and stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you want to see that content later down the line. As for the last week, the only thing that came about which was kind of interesting was the ability to see the northern lights from southeast England. So there was a big solar storm and over the course of two nights where we had semi-clear weather, you were actually able to make out the not only the hue and the glow, but you could actually make out the streaks um, of the northern lights uh, in the upper atmosphere. So I took a couple of pictures, and these are the pictures that I managed to capture. Just from an iPhone, it was a last minute thing, wasn't planned out, but I'm pretty pretty happy with how they turned out. Like Considering the colors and um, the vibrancy that comes through and the definition, uh, just from the back, back garden, and that was at about 1 a.m. or so, um, I think it worked out really quite nicely. As for today, uh, my plan is to go through a couple of lessons that I learned whilst I was going through the installation of the filters in the new filter wheel. So this was something that uh, tripped me up in a couple of areas, and hopefully if you go down a similar path or you're looking to install filters yourself, then maybe this video has some tips for you that might be helpful. So with that, let's jump in. So there are three tips that I'm going to run through with you today. And tip number one is to make sure that you are prepared. Preparation is everything when it comes to installing filters. They are so like susceptible to dust particles. If you're not prepped and ready when you go through the installation process and you've cleaned down your surface and you've made sure that you're wearing gloves to prevent any grease or dirt from your fingers or bits of hair, um, getting onto the filters themselves, you're gonna you're gonna get into a pickle. So what I did is I started by completely vacuuming the surface um, that I was going to be working on, um, and just made sure it was free of any little dust or debris bits. Um, and I actually wiped it down as well afterwards. Next thing I did, I put on some gloves. So I bought a box of silicon gloves uh, or latex gloves rather, um, just to a barrier between my hands or my skin and the filters themselves so that I don't transfer any just any grease or anything else that might be on my fingers. When it comes to handling the filters obviously you use the gloves and try to minimize touching them as much as possible um, but the other thing I invested in was an air blower or an air puffer I don't know what the right name is bulb bulb blower maybe I don't know um, very cheap on Amazon um, but this is probably one of the most useful pieces of kit. So being able to use this to clean the inside of the filter wheel before I actually installed anything, the cover of it, then the individual filters, making sure that each one of those, both sides are completely cleaned. And this really does get those tiny little bits of dust off. And then finally, before closing everything up, giving it a clean again. So that was really, really handy. Highly recommend getting one of these if you're gonna go down that path. The other thing I would say is once you've assembled everything and put it together, if there are any holes, like on the main um, the main entry point for the filter wheel, cover it with something so that dust doesn't settle in there whilst you're getting on with other bits. It's surprising how quickly the dust will just land on there. Okay, so lesson number two is front or back, back or front. Basically, which way around should the filters actually go? So depending on the type of filters you've got, they may or may not have a reflective coating on them. So for me, I went with the Amplia filters and each of them has a reflective coating, uh, which the idea is it's meant to prevent star halos um, or try and reduce them at least. So that film coating side is the side that needs to face the camera, um, which means if you're getting unmounted filters, then you need to figure out which way around you actually put it into the filter wheel. So this was something that I watched a few videos on um, and there's a very good channel with uh, I think it's Glenn Martin who who actually has a full walkthrough of how to actually install filters. So big shout out to him. It's worth checking out his channel. 
Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Um, but basically, when you're installing them, you need to look for the ghosting. So the idea is if you hold up a pen or any other object in front of one of the filters, then you can actually see a double reflection. It's very subtle um, and it doesn't come out particularly well on camera. So don't, if you can't make it out in the video that I'm showing now, don't be alarmed. Like if you actually go down this path and you do it yourself, it's more obvious in person than the camera can seem to pick up. Um, but I've tried it on a couple and it does vary depending on the filter as well. So I think the first one I did with the luminance filter, which really did not pick up the, the ghosting at all. It's, it was actually very hard to see with the naked eye as well. That was the most challenging one. All the other filters, not a problem. Um, so the blue filter, for example, far more prominent, much more obvious that there was that double, um, the double reflection coming through. And that's the side that needs to go towards the camera. And if you flip it over, then you get a perfect crisp reflection, which is the side that should be facing the telescope. So take your time on it. Obviously, there's no rush with it. But what I would say is don't be too concerned by it. Um, it's a lot easier to do in practice than it might seem on the face of it. Finally, tip number three, and um, this is to do with letting light in, really. One of the things I got caught out on, and it's a really rookie error, is leaving some open gaps where light could get in. So I didn't notice it the very first time I put the telescope out when I was doing some test runs with it and some shots just to see if the camera and filters were working properly. It was only when I brought it back in and I started taking dark frames that it became very prominent and there was a very distinctive shape that was coming through because of the positioning of the different holes that I'd left. So I'd gone to the trouble of actually making sure that I had the, um, I guess like a gasket or like a light leak Kind of ring um, between the camera and between the filter wheel um, and that prevented any light leak from there and that was a perfect seal so that was all good i knew that was working the bit that i'd overlooked was where i connected the filter wheel to the telescope um, that's obviously screwed in so there's no light leaks coming from there however there are also a few uh, screw holes where you could mount directly onto it um, and screw in. And those holes, I should in hindsight have put the screws back in um, uh, or cover them up in some other way. So for me, what I did is I ended up actually getting some black electrical tape and just covered them over because I was somewhat wary about putting the screws back in just because they would be poking all the way through the filter wheel um, and nothing would act as a buffer where they extend too far. And I just don't want to even, I don't even want to chance the fact that I might forget that they're in there if I later on take the, the filter carousel out and they lean one way and scratch the filters. So for me, I made sure that I actually just put some black electrical tape over the top and that did the trick. So that's lesson number three. Just make sure that you don't end up with light leaks. Um, just check everything. Make sure it's all well sealed and there's no holes, no gaps, no cracks, um, and you've used everything that's provided and you should be golden. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful or anything that was helpful for you, then please consider giving it a like or subscribe to the channel as well. Um, if you've got any other tips or lessons for people when they are going through the same process of installing filters and filter wheels, then drop a comment and um, share the knowledge with everyone else. Uh, otherwise, I will see you in the next video for hopefully a astrophotography session where I can actually get out and capture some more data. Um, and in the meantime, what I'm going to leave you with is a time-lapse of the full installation process that I went through. Thanks for watching and clear skies.